We're going to talk here about sensation and our ability to sense stimulus in the internal and external environment in order to maintain homeostasis. When we talk about sensations, what we're really talking about is a general flow of information that starts with the stimulus, leads to reception at the various sensory receptors throughout the body, which gets passed along afferent or sensory pathways, leading to integration within the spinal cord and then integration and perception within the cerebral cortex, particularly within the limbical areas and when within the thalamic areas of the cere cerebral cortex. That information will then get integrated with other sensations leading to a cognition or an awareness of the sense. This cognition leads to a cognitive response, sometimes referred to as an emotional memory. Unless we get the information passed all the way up into this cognitive response, we will not remember the stimulus. When we're looking at stimulations, what we're looking at, we're looking at dealing with specialized receptors that are going to give us sensory information, which we refer to as afferent information, which will lead to a motor output or an efferent response very similar to a reflex loop. This reflex loop is set up in such a way so as to maintain homeostasis, both with and without cognitive awareness. So how do we get this perception? How do we get the sense information from the periphery or from the internal sense areas into the ability to actually understand what's going on? In this pathway, we have two distinct areas where we can moderate the sense in what's referred to as desensitization or attenuation. We start with the stimulus. The stimulus will be received based off of what's referred to as energy and modality dependency. That is, what is the stimulus that I'm interacting with in terms of its physical characteristics? That's going to lead to a depolarization at the receptor which will lead to reception on a topographic dependency. That is, we'll have an actual anatomical regionalization of the sense organ that will be receiving the information within that anatomical orientation. That reception leads to a depolarization on the sensory afferent neurons that are associated with the distinct areas within the receptive field that is being interacted with by the stimulus energy. Based on the amount of stimulation taking place within this pathway, we can have a desensitization to the information. That is where the receptor or the afferent neuron itself will no longer send the action potential necessary for the information to be sent from the receptor to the cerebral cortex. We then hit an area of integration. And the first area of integration that we'll get is within the spinal cord leading to the autonomic or auto, the autonomic or the somatic reflex loops. The second area of in integration will take place is within the limbical areas as, as well as within the thalamus leading to the primary somatosensory cortexes, visual cortexes, auditory cortices, gustatory cortices, vestibular cortices within the cerebral cortex itself. From there, we then get information that will lead to a perception of the information going on. This perception can lead to automatic and autonomic responses without us being cognitively aware of the responses that we may be doing. This perception leads to further integration and sending of information within the ner central nervous system, particularly within the cerebral cortex and cerebral cortices, so as to integrate the signals between the neurons of the primary integration centers with the frontal and prefrontal cortical areas that are necessary for the formation and retention of memories and formation of emotions. If we do not get this cognitive awareness, this ability to have the uh, emotional memory to the sense, we will not remember that sense taking place. Now, within this red area, within this integration through cognitive awareness, 
if the information being passed from the peripherally or from the receptor does not change in the number of action potential trains that are being sent, the number of action potentials being sent along the axons, the integration areas stop receiving, put quotes around that, the information. They send in a feedback loop or in a reverberating neural network inhibitory signals that match the action potential trains that are coming along the afferent network. And what that does is that leads to what's referred to as attenuation to the signals. That is, we are no longer cognitively paying attention to the signals that are there. And what that does is it allows for us to have a ability to perceive and be aware of new novel stimulus. And so if we look at this in terms of the cascade of events that's taking place leading to sensation awareness. So we start with our stimulus, get to reception, reception is going to lead to integration. It's this area within the pathway where desensitization will take place, where either the sense receptor itself will be so overwhelmed with the energy of the stimulus that it wears itself out, or where we're sending inhibitory signals to the receptive field to say, okay, we need to slow down because we're getting worn out, where we re readjust how the receptor is gonna fire. Based off of where that desensitization takes place, we can have a temporary desensitization. That is where we are going to temporarily inhibit the receptor from firing or where the receptor will unload energy over time to the point where it can go ahead and become a receptor again or it can become permanent. When it becomes permanent, when it's up happening is that the receptor itself has become so damaged from overstimulation that it cannot respond again. Once we get into integration, we will then get into perception and then perception will lead to awareness. It's this area here where we will have the attenuation taking place. It's that attenuation that's taking place that allows us to be able to perceive all of the other stimulus that's taking place around us at all times. Because remember, we are being bombarded with stimulus every millisecond of the day. And it's all of those various sensory stimuluses that we have to pay attention to. And so what ends up happening in these integration areas is that we stop paying attention to signals that we already know, signals that are not changing, signals that are stable, so that we can pay attention to what is new, what is novel, because the new and novel is something that can either harm us or something that we must pay attention to in order to allow us to maintain homeostasis.